Alrighty y'all, it is the last night on a low carb cruise. We're in one of the foyer lobby areas, so it's kind of noisy. Hopefully you can pick up the audio still. And <clears throat> we were in conferences all day. Today was the last day of conferences as well. So I honestly did not get any vlog footage whatsoever. We just finished up with like the grand finale um, cocktail party where all the speakers and guests just kind of rub shoulders and socialized in a unprofessional laid back setting. So I figured I'd make today's vlog crystal in, in my three biggest takeaways from the low carb cruise in its entirety. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with crystal. Mm. Mm. One of my biggest takeaways is, um, I think I've kind of explained it to a couple people that I've had some confusion on, you know, um, not necessarily confusion, but just questions about like, you know, the amount of protein or the amount of fat or the amount of carbs or, you know, this or that, um, what's going to be good or best for certain types of people. Um, and truth be told is nobody knows. Um, because everybody is so, so different um, that you really have to figure out for your individual self what's going to work best for you. And it actually was, it was like a good confirmation that even the doctors didn't have a clear answer because everyone's still trying to figure it out. So I really, I, that was a good takeaway for me because I didn't feel lost, but I just wanted to know more and to realize that I'm just right there with everyone else felt really good. Yeah, and, and to kind of like hinge off of that, you know, we're all on the same team as far as like keto in general, you know? Like all the doctors, they had different opinions on things. All the speakers had different opinions on things. I had different opinions on things. But we're all keto or low carb, high fat at the end of the day. Um, so if you're doing that, you're on the right track. And I think that is hugely important. Sometimes we just get lost in the paralysis analysis. You know, do I have to have this perfect before I can proceed? No. You know, if you're doing keto, you're following the general guidelines, you're on the right track, you're gonna be making leaps and bounds over people that are just eating carbohydrates and sugars. Um, so, yeah, you're headed the right direction. Everything that we discussed, like, with regard to, like, protein ratios and all that stuff, I mean, that's just tweaking that last little bit. It's important, but, I mean, if you're doing keto, you're on the right track. Um, and that was honestly one of my points, too. Crystal kind of took the words out of my mouth. So, I'll speak on cholesterol and I kind of alluded to this in the prior video but one thing that we uh, both really took away is that cholesterol is crazy I get clients that will have they'll go get their blood work done and they'll have high LDL and their doctors will recommend a statin and then they'll automatically be scared or assume that the diet does not work for them the more science research literature publications that come out and the more case studies that come out, again, I'm not a doctor, I don't wanna play one on the internet, but do not worry about LDL as a standalone. There's so many other variables at play, there's so many factors that are key that you don't get at first glance. Sorry, it's kinda of noisy in here. But if your LDL is high and you're, and that's like, just just don't worry too much about cholesterol, that's the, that's the main takeaway I wanna really stress. Don't worry too much about cholesterol. Just because your LDL is high does not mean that keto is not for you. That's right. a huge takeaway. Um, another thing for me, I'm going to have to say is probably getting more labs done. That's something that I haven't really done um, in my keto journey at all. I've done, done labs for like my like health and stuff. Um, but not even like specific testing. And I also, I'm, I'm anxious to know what like my hormone levels lie at um, for like a lifting, um, you know, how much testosterone am I produ producing? How much progesterone, how much estrogen is my body naturally producing? And um, as well as, you know, your thyroid. And I mean, everything comes into play. And of course I already have my own health problems that you know, certain things might be higher or lower than others. And, it would be just really good to know and it was cool to see how many people were actually taking initiative and going and get, getting those things tested um, and how important it can really be to your specific diet. So 
I'm really excited to go get more labs done, more tests done, and I suggest all of you guys do the same things. Um, they actually did like a list of, um, of different labs and stuff that they would suggest that anybody get, and um, I think someone will upload that video of, of like all, the doctors had a, a panel and um, they just kind of all suggested, you know, certain tests that you you take or um, uh, certain labs that you get done that would be really good to, to keep track of. So I plan on getting most of those or, you know, a, at least a, a good amount of them. So I'm excited to do that and that was something that I took away from myself. Yeah, and, and kind of to hands off of that yet again, you know, there's there's different opinions different techniques, different practices used, but everybody that was at this conference, you know, the doctors, the individuals, you know, the just the people that wanted to learn more, you know, some people are going to perform better at a higher protein ratio, higher fat ratio, lower protein, lower fat, higher carb, more fiber, less fiber. You know, it's it sounds cliche, it sounds like this is just a cop-out answer, but really and truly, you know, Testing out things on your own body as an individual, I can't stress that enough. You know, everybody that was here was successful in some form or fashion in their own way, in their own journey, and they had such different strategies to get to that, that end point and to get to that journey. So, you know, there is no right or wrong way per se. There's your way. So be okay with finding and discovering your way. Um, and that was, that was again kind of like a cop answer. So just to give you a little bit more of a, you know, specific um, fiber. Fiber is one thing that I'm taking a keen interest in. You know, fiber, it's kind of interesting. There was an interesting point made tonight. You know, everything's back on the table now. Like the whole, you know, to be healthy, you have to have low fats, high protein, uh, high carbs. Like that, that's not necessarily the case anymore. And there's, there's enough evidence out there and, and fact out there and know that that's not necessarily the case. And the same can be said about fiber. Why would we assume that the same principles in place about fat being bad, you know, they always said that fiber was good. And yes, fiber is good to a point, but the recommendations of 40 grams of fiber a day or whatever it is, 35 grams of fiber a day, that number might be skewed. You know, there's not a whole lot of evidence that indicates that you have to have 35 grams of fiber to be healthy. There's no evidence really that indicates that you have to have, you know, daily movement to be healthy. Um, with the sense of digestion that is, not just movement in general. So, you know, take that in with a grain of salt too. Like, don't assume that you have to have fiber to be healthy, and especially like a specific 35 gram arbitrary number of, of fiber to be healthy. Um, so yeah, everything that was thought of with regard to nutrition is back on the table, and that applies to all things. Like, nothing is set in stone, so Hey, open your eyes to some things that were believed previously that might not necessarily be true now. Absolutely. What you got? Um, another big thing I took away, which is not necessarily uh, keto specific, but was talked about a lot um, through almost everybody's um, presentations was overall health in general and that means like having a positive attitude and you know getting your your blue you know robert wears those blue light or those blue you know those glasses that block out like certain like um light and um you know mouth taping and um really getting a good adequate amount of sleep and you know what your cortisol levels are doing i mean it's just like having like a full lifestyle instead of just choosing to like eat this and eat that but like really having like an overall health and care for your whole body um where at you know we, we really try and advocate for that but a lot of times we lack in sleep and we lack in um you know making sure to turn off all the lights an hour before bedtime or whatever it is and that's something that i'd really like to work on for myself so i'd like to re-watch a lot of those um uh presentations and be able to take those away and really know the reason behind what I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah, and I second that. You know, I, I definitely want to focus on overall health as, instead of just like one area specific. Like, your body is a, it's, it's a huge, efficient, complex machine. Like, there's a lot more variables at play, a lot more factors at play than just one thing. Yeah, and everything works together. 
Yeah, it's all symbiotic in nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing I want to take away, or one other one of my big takeaways, is kind of more general, but very, very, very important, and that is that, you know, the doc, the doctors made a pretty good. Ken Berry, I think, was the one that iterated this the most. But like, you know, right now the diabetic trend line is increasing. The obesity trend line is increasing, and his goal is to see a downward trend with those with those lines and he's smart enough to know that he can't do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis you know you know one doctor with one client consultation or one patient consultation rather you're not gonna be able to change that trend line it's growing at a faster rate than a one-on-one -on -one interaction could possibly move each one of those interactions is very very important and you can change a life and that is key but at scale you need more than one-on-one -on -one. so I mean like Ken Berry's killing it right now like he's doing social media all these doctors are Dr. Lemansky he's getting on social media because they realize that they can have a larger impact of more than just the one-on-one -on -one interaction and make a bigger difference you know that's that's the beauty of social media you can impact such a larger group um, that's why I'm so passionate about putting out content with the podcast, the Instagram, the YouTube, the daily vlogs, like all this stuff. The more people I can reach and impact at scale, the bigger difference I can make. And everybody can do that. Like, you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to have yep. an MD, a PhD, or any of that behind your name. You know, you just be, tell you your story. Your life. Yeah. yeah, tell your story. You know, like if you tell... If you get one member of your family on board and they get one member on the family, there's a compounding exponential effect if we're all doing this. It's a grassroots movement from the bottom up, not from the top down. And, you know, if this has changed your life or if it's got the potential to change your life, take take part and do your part and spread the word and let's make a difference, y'all. Let's make a difference. Sound good? Yep. All right, and that concludes our vlog for the day. So, tomorrow... We're headed home. We'll catch y'all later. Been a blast.